Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. And welcome to my birthday lockdown live show here. A bit of an impromptu kind of thing. I didn't know I was going to do this until early on today and I thought, what the hell, I'd like to get on there and say hello to some of you folks on my birthday. And of course, I'm stuck here at home, um, just like the rest of you probably looking for things to do. And this is one of the things I figured out that I would do. Um, I do have a little bit of a plan. I've got a few notes here um, to rough, to roughly go through. And so, and I've got somebody else coming on the show as well during the show, which is a little bit exciting for me. Um, so I'm not here all by myself. But before I get started, I just want to say thank you to all the people who have already joined us in the chat. I will be saying hi to some of you. And if you've got particular questions or comments, I will be highlighting some of those as well. Thank you for all of you who have already wished me happy birthday um, in on Facebook and on YouTube here. Very much appreciated. And a few of you, or some people have already asked how old I am, and um, I'm going to make that little quiz for you just to play for fun. I don't want you to guess how old I am. I want to do this in a slightly different way, okay? Um, the first thing I would like you to do, if you're going to guess how old I am, is I'm going to ask you this question. Which song was number one in the Billboard charts on the day I was born? So, you know, I know lots of you are going to be jumping on Wikipedia now and guessing what song was number one in 1942. And that would be wrong. You need to guess a little bit later than that. And a sort of a secondary question to that, just for those of you on the other side of the Atlantic Pond, is um, what was number one in the UK charts on the day I was born? And uh, I will give you a little bit of a clue that they're both songs which I think really, really suck. So I came into a world of poor music. What can I say? It got a little bit better after that. Um, so <laughs> have your guesses in there. <laughs> I can always see some cheeky answers. I know, I know. There's going to be some cheekiness about this, guys. Um, now, the, th the thing I want to say before I do get into the show is a massive, massive thank you. Um, the channel's really grown a lot recently. I couldn't be more pleased. And I see lots and lots of new names in the comments. I get lots of emails from you guys. Um, I'll say thank you and a little bit of an apology because I can be rather slow at answering those emails. Just be patient with me. And if it's really, really urgent, ask in the comments and perhaps on the Creative Source forums as well. Links for that in the description. Um, and there are some particular thanks that I want to make to some people who have donated very kindly via my PayPal link, which you'll often see in the description. I just want to quickly run through those names now. Um, there's Roy Van... Oh, now, <laughs> sorry, this is where things fall apart because... I might be able to make music, but I virtually can't read. So sorry about the pronunciation. Um, Roy van der Born, uh, Julio Xavier, Justin Martin, Manoj Matthew, Frank de Burr, Leo Gallant, Steve Kaplan, Volker, Volker Con Gitzber, and Hugh Sutton. Thank you, Hugh, for having a really easy name to pronounce. I very much appreciate that. Now, before... I um, invite my guest onto the into, onto the show, um, who's who's a very dear friend of mine. I'm very happy that he's going to be on the show with me. Um, I just want to remind you guys of a couple of little things. One, there's a few days left to enter the competition for the Focusrite Scarlet Two I Two giveaway. I think I'll be doing a live shoe sh show on Wednesday for that. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, and I'm hoping it can go out in the post okay. Um, thankfully, at the moment, I think we can still send internationally from Australia. And also just uh, thank you very much to all those people who have been sending me uh, words of encouragement about the channel. Very, very much appreciated. Loads of people in the chat here. Before we get to the people in the chat, I do want to introduce my guest. And his name is Pete Johns. Here he is. Pete! There you are. Hello, Mike. Hello. Happy birthday. Oh, it's, it's it's an absolute pleasure to be here back on Creative Source. It's been far too long since uh, I've been on the channel. But uh, happy it birthday, has. mate. Uh, 1939, represent. I love it. <laughs> for a few months, actually, since we were together. And so for lots of people who uh, have not seen you on my channel before, um, Steve and I, uh, Steve, I remember who you are. I know who you are. <laughs> Pete and, Pete and I used to do a show together every week. <laughs> we, 
didn't we, Steve? Yep. <laughs> and um, and uh, that was a, a few months ago. So lots and lots of you are new to the channel in the last few months. So I want to just quickly let you know that Pete is from a channel, Studio Live Today. Is your channel officially called Pete Johns or is it officially called Studio Live Today if people are searching for you? It's very controversial, but it is Pete Johns um, because I've never changed it from that. That's how that's how old school I am. But uh, yeah, search Pete Johns on the YouTubes and the internets, and you'll find me. But and Studio Live today is what I call myself. So go figure. The reason I say that is because people need to search for you. Because although I might say I'm going to add a link to your channel later on after the show, I'll probably completely forget about that, and, <laughs> and no one will ever know who you are. So Pete Johns, look him up. And the reason um, that that me and Pete are friends is first of all because I used to watch him before I even started my YouTube channel. I used to watch his channel, and it was a much younger and much smaller channel. Um, and I really very much like his style of teaching. He's a very, very good teacher. And he particularly specializes, um, I would say, in mobile recording. I would say I iOS centric, Apple centric. He does do other videos about lots of other interesting topics as well. But if he's known for anything, it would be to do with recording on mobile devices. And if any of you are scoffing out there, stop it. Stop <laughs> it. You can record really high quality music on these devices. A friend of mine was asking me all about it yesterday and I sent him to your channel. Um, so, you know, if it's, look, you don't have to join one camp or the other. You can sometimes record on mobile, sometimes record on your iPad. Check out Pete's channel. There you go. Thank Can you, I Mark. Your name, mate? Oh, yeah. absolutely. And and a hundred percent. And uh, likewise, I think it's a match made in heaven because every time someone says, Hey, I'm getting into recording on my PC. Where do I go? I say, uh, creative source is where you go. Because if you want to learn all the best techniques and tics, tips and tactics for recording on your PC, you better get over to creative source. So I think it's wonderful, but I'm, I'm very keen to hear a little bit more about, uh, about uh, maybe the backstory of like, uh, where did this all oh. come from? And it's your birthday oh, today. Mate. You've got to get a bit self-indulgent, don't you? You've got to tell us. I know that the creative source universe are waiting with bated breath to hear a little bit more about you on your birthday here today. Not only to know what birthday it is, <laughs> but to know more about where you came from and what you're doing here. Well, it's funny you should say that. And I promise everybody, I didn't share my notes with Pete beforehand before he made that segue. <laughs> but um, look, I, I'm going to get a little bit serious, Pete. I know you're not used to me being serious, but I'm going to be very, very serious at times. Happy. During this. So I want you to try and play along and be serious as well, please. All right. Mm -hmm. So just take yeah. control of yourself. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Um, now, before we get into that backstory, can, can I just say, we, 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 you've got a role here tonight. Your job is to keep an eye on the comments for me. Oh, okay. okay? Because it. it's nice to have someone else here. Because yep. now you you can't promote a comment, can you? But you no, can tell me about it. You can tell me about it. If someone so makes a very good comment, I'll. Uh, I'll should we, uh, should we yeah. say hi to some of the people? I'm mm. going to pop their their comments up, right? Do it. And you're going to pronounce their names, okay? All right, okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. So Boom. the first comment is from Frank De Biar. All right. And Frank is uh, where's where's Frank? I'm, look, it sounds like a French name, doesn't it? Do you think so? Or maybe Dutch. It could be Dutch. It could be Dutch. I'm not really sure. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. I hope we haven't insulted you in any way. Um, I would like to follow your live progress, but I promised my wife to go cycling. So Frank's probably not here. We can say what we like about Frank, on the other hand. He's gone off cycling with his missus. So, oh, Frank, eh? <laughs> Always probably puts his cycling thing. before his music. That will be his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> I, was serious. I was getting my serious face on. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Next, next one. Next one. Next one. Uh, we have, uh, oh God, Fortish, Fortish Beats. Nice. Nice one, Pete. Happy birthday, sir. He says, wish you all the best. Thank you so much to Fortish. I would have said Fortich. Fortich. The, 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 oh, oh, this is a nice Fortich. one. I like this one. This is a oh. nice one. Hey, here we go. Uh, Carol uh, Klimjak. Mm, nice. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, any guess at the nationality of that that surname? Uh, the Czech Republic, right there. That's what I thought as well. That's exactly what I was thinking. So, uh, thanks, Carol, for the happy birthday wish. There, going through. I'm just going to whip through. I'm going to miss some guys. Very, very sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll pronounce this one. Um, uh, Mimo Japan or Mimo, as I, as I always call him. 
one of you remember him, Pete, from our shows mm-hmm. many moons ago. He's, he's oh, yeah. just an old follower of mine. Someone you haven't met yet, Pete, um, who is a bit newer is Joe Grint. He's been around for a little while now. Um, I hope he helps out that forums. one. That's a good one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> again. And um, I'll, I'll let you pronounce the next, next one. There's a comment here. Right. Which is nice. Oh, oh, there's a, there's a little, uh, what are those called? The accents? Uh, Shaliel. <laughs> How's that? That was good. Shaliel. That was really good. I like, I like the accent. That was nice. Shaliel. All right. Uh, just, just one more. <laughs> one more before we actually get on with the blooming right. show. People must, people will probably already leave. There's yep. two yeah. people left. There was 37 <laughs> before. Now there's 35. Okay. All right. I'm probably Bye-bye. offended by your pronunciation. Probably. Here 100%. All right. Here we go. All right, this one. I like this. This one. Oh no, no, that one's too easy to pronounce. Oh, I'm uh, worried. Let's go. Oh, go, go this one. This is easy enough. This is easy. Enough. Ray De Campos, my buddy Ray De Campos. Really good name, and thanks very much right. for the birthday wishes, Ray. Cool, cool name like that. I might change my name, Mike De Campos. <laughs> Good. You you told me to be serious about five minutes ago, and then you you did that. No, but that's okay. No, no. Putting my serious face back on. All now. right. So so there is a little bit of a theme to the show. There's a little bit of a theme, guys. And I, I'm going to apologise in advance because this is going to be a little bit self indulgent. And I don't like YouTube as being self indulgent normally, but I'm going to break the rule because it's my birthday. But there's a little backstory here, um, and that is that I do get an awful lot of messages. Um, from guys, a uh, few statistics here, 96% of the people who watch my channel are guys. I don't know why not so many women get into sort of home studio recording. There are some. And there's, I don't see any reason why each, why any gender should be better at it. It doesn't make much sense to me, but that's the way the statistics are. And um, so I do get a lot of, and now I've got a very wide range age group of people who watch the channel, but there's a decent amount of fellas who mm-hmm. are a little bit older, not as old as me, perhaps. <laughs> not <laughs> That's taking it a bit far, isn't it? <laughs> but a little bit older. And um, so let's say above around about 40 mm-hmm. and upwards. Yeah, Old. I know one of my one of my uh, followers. I maybe forget his name. I'm sorry. It might be Lou or Greg, Fred. <laughs> I can't remember his name, but I know he's 93 and he uses Cakewalk to record orchestral music. That's awesome. Love it. So great. It's great. Great to see that. Um, and <laughs> I think his name's Ted. Actually, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe you call that a senior moment, moment Mike? Uh, that what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, but there's a lot of guys in seriousness. So I get a lot of messages from guys who explain that they've been away from music for a few years, mm-hmm. um, sometimes a couple of decades. And often the reason for that is is um, uh, that they have been busy bringing up a family, you know, um, in, in, in either, you know, steady work or well-paid work to, to help raise that family. It's an important part. Well, they do just busy being a dad, and obviously, sometimes you'll understand this that you know, musical equipment is low on the uh finance agenda for a household, oh, yeah. and and also, um, time spent in our little man caves doing that is you know something we can sometimes just grab here and there. So, um, and indeed, I've got friends whose um home studio consists of an audio interface sat on a little coffee table in the corner of their living room. And, you know, they once in a while get to plug things into it. So mm-hmm. um, I'm hoping that lots and lots of people who are watching can identify with this because that's my little, why I want to give a little bit of a backstory. And do you find you get similar people to that on your own channel or is you is it yours like 96% women who like bald guys? I mean, <laughs> It is 97, 96% women who like ball guys. Uh, it's not quite 96, but yes, it's it, it's up there. Mine's, uh, I, was, I was actually trying to look at my stats while you were talking there. I was listening, but I was looking at the stats. And <laughs> it's not quite 96, but it's it's similar. And the, the absolute target audience for you and me, and we were chatting sort of in the pre-show here about mm. our audience and what we've been trying to do and that 
you and I are both pretty focused on encouraging people to just record music and to whatever mm. you have and whatever means you have, just get started. And I think I think you said to me the very one of the very first things you said to me is like, um, I was watching Rick Beato, Pete, and if a grey haired dude can like get a million subscribers and have a YouTube channel, then I thought, why can't I? And I'm like, bloody oath, just do it. So yeah, the same sort of thing. If a, if if a bald dude with a shiny spot on his forehead can can also have a youtube channel then anyone can so yes yep. same sort of deal here mate and uh yes it's it's definitely the case that if you if you are and again if you're sitting there thinking i'm on the fence here go back through mike's back catalog i'm not just here to shill mike's previous work but <laughs> i honestly do send people over that way to say if you're on a pc don't, don't come to my channel go to creative uh, source and learn how to create with band lab and, and studio one I and all the things I think you'd have been a little bit modest about a couple of things here. And Happy Ron has just brought this up in the comments, you know, saying women love Pete Johns. And I, I've seen it. I've seen it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think some of them pretend to be men just so oh. they don't embarrass you. <laughs> oh, is that real? Uh, that's okay. I'm down. Like that. So I wanted to give a little bit of a backstory to dispel yep. any illusions because sometimes people see us in this little rectangle they probably are holding in their hand most of the time and perhaps we think that we're something different to them and we, we're really not and um I, i'm not trying to feign what's the word um i've forgotten the word it doesn't matter about the word whatever it is i'm not trying to feign it mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so i want to give a very very brief sort of backstory about me yep um and uh and it's just going to be very brief so i was so a lot of people do ask me about this, so I can send them to this video when they ask me these questions in the future. I was actually born in Australia, here in Perth, where I am now. Um, in that year, which those songs were famous in, which I'm not... 1939. We haven't had any guesses. Uh, um, if you can guess what year, um, what songs were number one in the USA and the UK in the year I was born, then you'll get a pat on the back from me. So, born here in Perth... Um, Grew up in a family which moved around a lot. I lived in Sydney for a while, moved around a bit, um, and uh, eventually moved to the UK when I was nine years old. I just about discovered before that that I loved music. Just was fascinated, fascinated with listening to music all the time when I was from about seven. Went to the UK, um, lived there in a little place called the Isle of Wight, very small rural community, not much going on there in, in terms of music, for sure, um, and sort of grew up there. Um, I didn't come from a talented family in terms of music. There wasn't my mother and father loved listening to music, but they weren't musical. I think my grandfather had been musical, but he died a long time before uh, I was born even, um, and so on and so forth. Um, got very heavily into music, especially during my teenage years, high school band, you know, all that sort of stuff. Learned to start learning to play guitar when I was about 10. Um, had a great music teacher at school, thankfully. Thank goodness for my music teacher, who was very encouraging in terms of uh, different genres of music. Anything I can ever talk about, about music theory these days, pretty much comes from him. I didn't think it was music theory at the time, so I wasn't scared of it. I was just hungry to know anything about music. Um, and he, he passed it on in a really natural and awesome way. And mm. then uh, did the usual thing, bands, bands, bands. Left school, worked in a music instru musical instrument store when I first left school. Was in a band in the evenings, doing that whole thing, playing original material, written songs from when I was about 11 years old. So always was in to original material. Did all that. Um, and then hit 22 um, and had some babies i didn't have some babies my, <laughs> my wife at the time contributed babies. To babies and so i was very much um uh I'm still pursuing a musical thing had at this point moved away from the isle of Wight onto mainland england the band were playing all over the place different cities living in the back of a transit van driving all over the place but in the middle of this um two little babies come along and then after a couple of weeks, unfortunately, one of my sons died. So at a very early age, I was very hit like a hit by a truck, you know, with with life, you know, mm. proper, proper 
the, the first time I really experienced any kind of hardship. Anyway, uh, worked through that difficult times, probably suffered my first sort of depressions and things over those years. Continued to play music, continued to be in a band through most of my 20s. And uh, it took up all my time, affected my marriage, all sorts of things. And then decided at a certain stage that I can't do this. I need to put food on the table. I need to supply, you know, security for my son, so on and so forth. And I became a nurse. I bet not many people know that who watch my channel. I was a nurse for about four years. For mm. about four years. Yes, did mm. that. Over the years, I'd done all those other things, washed cars, worked in retails, you know, as well as playing in the band, all those things. Um, and then decided, and probably didn't play guitar at that point for hmm. maybe two, three years. Anyway, that all went on. Then I came to Australia. Then at that time, I was more of a solo musician. I was going to continue nursing, but I decided not to. Went back to music, was playing in bars and pubs, doing a lot of busking. Travelled around, I bust in, you know, America, UK, Australia, Japan, played a bit in, um, you know, over those years in places like the Philippines, um, some different countries, got some different experiences. Um, and then another two little babies came along. <laughs> and again, I decided, well, I love this life, but it's not really good, does not really conducive for children and I then spent a good few years um, working in IT. I had some IT um, talents. I worked um, in IT for many, many years, um, some of them in Asia, some of them in Australia, da-da-da. And it wasn't until I was about 45 um, when my kids were old enough and things were stable enough that I jacked that all in and became like just a muse again. So mm. so what I'm trying to say in all of that is it's not that interesting story in lots of ways. There's, there's more to it, obviously. A life's more complicated than that. But um, the, I do understand what it's like to sh shut down your passion for your other passions. Mm -hmm. I don't want to downplay this like somehow guys who do this give up on life. They do something really mm. important. Because the role of fatherhood in our society these days, as, as well as being undervalued, is exceptionally important. So I want to, first of all, congratulate the guys on my channel, on your channel, who did that and are now getting back to it. But I know I've rambled on a little bit here. Um, uh, so I, what I want to get onto in a moment is, is a little thing. And you might, I, I might invite you to take part in this as well, Pete. Is to mm. ask ourselves the question. I know you're only in your forties, <laughs> but is to ask yourself the question of what advice would we give our twenty-year-old self? Mm. Okay. Now I'm throwing you on the spot there because I didn't tell you I was going to do that. So I'll let you mull over that while I quickly look through some of the comments. Okay. Absolutely. You've got some great people here, some familiar faces and names <laughs> to me. And uh, no, I, I just want to say while, while you look through the comments there and pick which mm -hmm. ones you want. Um, I, I knew most of that story already because Mike and I have been chatting mm -hmm. for a couple of years now. Um, it's not even probably that long. But, um, yeah, it, it, is, it is so good. And it, hopefully for you folks, it is good to hear that story because hopefully there were some parts of that that you can relate to. And if you can't relate to them, then it, it is still the same sort of journey. Like everyone has their own personal journey and music is part of that. And music was obviously part of your journey, but other things are as well. And uh, everyone in our circle is generally doing music, but they're also living their life as well. So how you balance those is super important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are going to make their own choices. I've, I've known um, people over the years who, um, you know, weren't able to make that choice that they, they, they weren't able to give up. Um, they weren't able to give up their musical life in order to, um, yep. pursue some of the things and I did it a bit half and half and, and I, I won't judge people either way because you know we, we all make our own choices based on our own life um, but um, you know what I will say is is that um, I don't regret any of it I, I don't regret mm. one single little second of it um, 
just I, I alluded to the fact that I played in a band for a good part of my 20s. What an awesome time. I'm still in contact with all those guys. Um, we talk, you know, with, you know, with, you know, fun about some of the experiences we had. And there was a lot of experiences. Playing with a band will teach you things that you can never, ever learn by yourself, unfortunately. And I know a lot of people who don't have much choice. But if you can yeah. play with other musicians, mm -hmm. it expands you in certain ways. It expands you as a person. Um, it, it, it challenges your creativity um, in, in different ways that you won't be challenged just by working with yourself. So, so I don't re regret any part of it whatsoever, you know, um, or even though I didn't ultimately make it in terms mm. of, you know, that thing. Um, uh, I, if, if now, if someone was going to give me the choice, you could make it or you could do what you did, I'd still do what I did. I'd be much happier with having my life that I've had with my children. Mm. Uh, no two ways about it than than yep. what I see the, is sometimes the life they have. Um, yeah, I would I would agree with that. And and before you jump into the comments, mm. two points there. I think you have made it first first and foremost because a lot of people <laughs> would be looking at you going, "Hey, that's what I want to do." So that that's pretty cool as well. Um, and yeah, and secondly, it it, it is all about what you want to do and what you want to get out of your music. So um, yeah, like. Don't, don't sort of look back and go, yeah, what, what should I have done? But uh, I know we'll get into that in a moment. But, yeah, mm -hmm. the advice you have for myself is, might be that, yeah, do, do exactly what you did. But um, I'll, I'll let you go on. I'll stop interrupting you. Um, just a quick, I oh, know Happy Ron's here, and Happy Ron's uh, a friend of your channel as well. Peter. Hello, Happy know, Ron. Um, always good to see Happy Ron. I know you made an episode with Happy Ron, which I really enjoyed. Really nice character, uh, Ron Scott as well. 55 years young, um, a little bit older than me. Just a little hint there. Ooh. Wrong. Not much. Um, uh, Gary in here, uh, 67. I, 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 you, you, you don't have to reveal your age in the comments, but thank you, Gary. I know Gary's been a really uh, nice supporter of my channel. Um, so really appreciate it, Gary, as well, um, just while I'm here. Um, let's go through some of the others. There was a couple. Um Greg um, is saying it's an honourable profession, mate. Uh, we, I don't know which profession Greg's talking <laughs> about, but uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it could what? be could be anything. musician, IT, father, all the all the above. I go with that. <laughs> um, Greg's admiring your guitar collection as well, Pete. There, asking if it's an ovation. That is the uh, which one? That yes, that's a little Martinez ovation. Very nice guitar. I mean, come over to my channel. Nice, we'll talk. They about are nice it. guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just want to say to Brian here, he's saying he lost his daughter three years ago. Um, Brian, um, all I can say to you is, for me, that happened um, almost getting close to thirty years ago. Um, you never quite get over it, but you 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 learn to uh, move on with life. And there are times when you you're happy, and um, there are times when you will get sad about it. And uh, can't fib about that. But that's the way it is. And, and a newcomer, not for you, Pete, but not to me, is Jacques. And I always like to think I can pronounce his name, Jacques Boulot. Um, Boulot. <laughs> he's a really big supporter of my channel. Nice to see you here, Jacques. A Canadian. There's lots of Canadians. Um, on my channel so uh he's been a great support of mine thanks Jack. nice to see you here um <laughs> greg's just uh, saying that he's yeah, talking about the nurse. oh the nurse yeah okay great the, the, yeah the nurse, that's the honorable it See, you, is. you told me that about a year ago and i'd forgotten till this very moment that it I'll was tell you what, you were a nurse for a little bit for a little period i there. don't want to bump this up i was a terrible nurse i was a rubbish nurse <laughs> it's part of the reason why i'm not a nurse. it's a really hard job i mean i know that seems obvious but it's mm. super hard, right? You have to put up with sick people all the time. All they do is whinge. Oh, my right. pain it hurts. <laughs> and and you're, you're a nurse in Britain too, right? That's got to be like double. I was double a nurse wind. in Britain. Yeah, I was a nurse in Britain. And um, all right, all my British friends. National friend. Health yeah. Service. NHS. Yeah, no, it was really good times. I'm still in contact with all of my nursing friends from those times who I went to uni with. And nice. God bless them. Most of them are still doing it as well. Oh, um, my hat's off to them if so, I was wearing it. So I'm going to throw this out to you, Pete. And, and if, if you mm. think I'm throwing you under the bus here and it's a bit too yeah. hard, then um, then that's okay. So you are a little younger than me, 
Mm, but nope. still no spring chicken. Um, <laughs> so uh, what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self in terms of music or in terms of life, if you like? But... Oh, my, my, my 20-year-old self had some, had some serious, uh, serious issues. And in fact, part of, uh, not to get too serious again, but part mm. of the reason why I do what I do here, so I'm, I'm 41, so my 20-year-old mm-hmm. self is like about uh, half a lifetime ago. Um, yep. But my 20-year-old self didn't get out of their comfort zone. They didn't do what they wanted to do. They worried way too much about what other people thought, and they did things for other people's to please other people, not to please themselves. So my advice to my 20 year old self would be to be your own person, do what you want to do, not worry about what other people think about what you do and just get on and get out of your comfort zone and do the things you want to do. It's pretty much as simple as that. I've thought about it a lot over the last 20 years. And the fact that, I mean, I couldn't do what I do now 20 years ago because YouTube didn't exist. I couldn't have had a YouTube channel. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I played music when I was 20 and then I did, it's interesting that you said the whole having a life thing and then coming back to music, what I would do differently is that I would keep music a little bit more. Like you can't do 100% music, right? So when you're, a, when you're a father, when you're having a career, when you've got a family, when you've got a mortgage, when you're doing all that, you can't be 100% all in on your music because it just doesn't work that way. You've got to pay bills. Mm-hmm. You've got to pay the mortgage. You've got to do all those things. But I could have been 20%. I could have been 80-20 at that point, but I was 100% zero. So my mm-hmm. advice to my 20-year-old 20, 20 self would be don't be 100% zero be 80, 20, be 70, 30, be 90, 10, whatever little chunk you can give to music, give to music and don't beat yourself up when you can't find any more time for music. So don't like pull yourself over the coals because you're not creating these epic albums and you're not being this famous musician. Just do what you can do, get it done, be your best self and go from there. So yes, 20 year old Pete would have been a lot better off if he had the wisdom of 41 year old Pete, but he didn't. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So the 20 year olds that come to me and say, what should I do? I'm like, just go, just do your thing, do as much as you can, be true to yourself and don't worry too much about what other people say. And, and you know, your advice to your 20 year old self is very, very close to what mine would have been. Um, and you touched upon something there and I know it sounds a little bit of a cliche and, you know, we always say, be yourself, you know, be true to yourself, but it's so, so so true. So it, mm-hmm. one of the reasons I don't regret um, all of those years with the band and that kind of thing is because um, within it, the music that we made was always what we wanted to make. And we mm-hmm. kind of just hoped that the audience, we would lie. We, we would try and get gigs in bars yep. and they would say, what kind of music do you play? And we'd say, oh, we play all covers and we'd say whatever covers we play with. And we'd turn up to the gig and just play all our own songs. And as long as the audience liked it, we got yep. away with it. There's a couple of times we didn't get away with it. We didn't get paid. But, <laughs> you know, but that was that was the way. And so I don't regret it from that point of view. And I'm going to sort of badmouth someone here, but I'm not going to mention their name so it doesn't count. But a little while ago, I was watching uh, a very, very famous YouTuber in our genre of you know basically teaching people about home recording yeah and uh what he said really struck me because he was advising people if you're writing a song and you're recording this song make sure you get to the chorus within 30 seconds um because people these days have got short attention spans and you know and i won't say who it was i do admire the i know who it was i i i but i won't say either i i I do admire him but i I think Likewise. that that advice should have had, I think the word is sort of proviso, meaning if you want to be commercially successful, if that's mm. why you're recording, then maybe that rule's a good rule. You know, Queen might disagree with him or <laughs> all the other people that broke all those rules that were always there. Right. I mean, yeah. it was two and a half minutes in the 60s, you know, mm. the length of a song. But so, what, what, but what I'm saying is, is that, there's many, many other reasons to use your computer and, and an audio interface and a microphone to make music other than make money out of it. You can make some money out of it, sure. I don't, I've got nothing against that whatsoever. But understand what the difference is, yeah? Mm. Yeah. This is going to sound a little bit snobby, but I'm going to say it anyway. Understand the difference between music for money and art, mm. right? Because art demands that the chorus comes whenever the chorus needs to come for that art. 
not 30 seconds, not five seconds, not three minutes, whenever that comes. And so I would say that be mindful of that. You've got a great opportunity. Look, if you're a 40 or 50, I'll, I don't want to have to break it to you. You're not going to make it big time <laughs> in the music business, right? What? <laughs> I know. What? Shock horror. Yeah. I, no, I don't like it. You, <laughs> you, you should, like, in my opinion, focus on enjoying making music for the rest of your life. And in that sense, I think that if you are at that age – and making music on a, and you watch a channel like mine or a channel like yours or one of the many others and you're trying to learn about it, you are more likely making proper art than somebody who is normally going to be younger, like I was, who wanted to kind of make it mm. big, be famous. You know? Can I say two things? I've two. got two things on my mind. Yeah. Number one is that, Yes, if you are 40 or 50 or however old Mike is, we still don't know, he hasn't quite revealed the exact number, then, <laughs> yeah. And if you do want to make it, like if, if, you, if you don't want to listen to old man Mike and say, oh, mate, what if I do want to make it in music? What mm -hmm. you're probably not going to be able to make it in is following the kids in whatever the latest trend is. Like if I try to make a mm -hmm. trap beat, I don't have the time, the inclination or the care factor to make a trap beat as good as whatever the latest trap beat making person is. So I'm probably not mm -hmm. going to do that. What you are going to do is appeal to people by being yourself and doing your own thing and being unique and yeah. different. There aren't too many people yeah. following the trends that are like the seventh person that did exactly this one thing and they're suddenly the best at it. So, yes, uniquity, doing your own thing is super important. The other thing that uh, one of your viewers here said, Mike, is uh, Ray DeCampos said humility. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the one word that I would say to my 20-year-old self that I would – absolutely embrace which is humility and if you're not familiar with humility it is the ability to realize that you, 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 your stuff does stink sometimes and you <laughs> you do have that ability to you know not always do the right thing and it's not even all about that but it's just about looking around you and going yes i i appreciate what i do i appreciate other people and i'm not going to be i'm not going to raise myself above and i'm not going to talk down to people i'm going to lead through uh servant leadership not through like just pushing down on other people and i know that's something you do on your channel you explain everything so so well and so clearly that anyone's going to be able to understand that and that my friend shows great humility which uh, you oh, have well, i think yeah i mean i think you're being a little bit kind to yourself because i can't imagine you ever being anything but humble <laughs> i'm sure your 20 year old self was was full of humility, Pete. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I take the point and... Uh, no, 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 no. He, he well. thought he was pretty good. I did have the long Eddie Vedder hair and the flannel <laughs> shirt. So I kind of thought I was a little bit better than I probably uh, was. So maybe I did need a little well, bit of a, a little tiny dose of humility like uh, like Ray points out here. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that, that is, it's very humbling, isn't it, to listen to those recordings from 20 years ago. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially the live ones. Oh, Pitchy. I got some, uh, anyway. some eight minute video that I uh, I need to share on the channel. Uh, woo, yeah, she's a bit rough. Uh, Greg is Greg, Greg was suggesting to his twenty year old self stop partying and start practicing. <laughs> yeah, a bit of both, Greg. I'm going to say, you know, uh, yeah. it's it's something that How I will on. say. I have had um, musical friends who have indulged themselves completely in music. Mm. And in my opinion, their songwriting absolutely stinks because of that, because they all they can write about is is being a music. You get this. Now, one thing I, you may not know about me is I, I really do quite enjoy a bit of rap. Now, mm -hmm. a part of the reason for that is I'm primarily a lyrics man, and yeah. there are some awesome lyrics. But the only thing I don't like about rap is, and this is very common nowadays, is that they sing about being a rapper, or they rap about being a rapper. And how people <laughs> diss them online and so like, and they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. breaking the fourth wall like there, no good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Is that what you're saying? You want a little <laughs> bit more substance in your uh, lyrics? A little lyrics? bit more substance, probably, probably. probably. Um, <laughs> loves from intensive care duty from Turkey. Okay, thank you. Nice. Uh, I won't pronounce. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, can I try? Ma Celik Nanat. Oh, you're good. You're good. Very, very good. Um, and um, somebody was saying here, uh, Wombat, good name mm. as well, 
Um, in my country, the music I love is legal metal, so no playing in a band for me. Um, which country was that? Let us know which country that is, uh, well, mate. I'd love to. I think know that's the uh, Republic of Footloose, isn't it? Um, from memory. Sorry, that's a really bad <laughs> 80s joke. Um, I'm sorry, if, terrible, honestly, man. if your country band's metal, then uh, I, I really feel bad for you and, and come to Australia because we love metal and we love all genres of music. So uh, we would love to have we you do. here. We, we, you, can't come, you can't come at the moment. That's the other problem. There's we, restrictions. Give me a couple of so. months come to after Australia. This yeah. is all over. Good point. After lockdown. Uh, Drummer Boy was saying, uh, Sean and Crazy Diamond, the lyrics don't come in for about eight minutes. Never mind the chorus. That song <laughs> has done okay. Absolutely. Um, another one that mm. always gets me, I may have mentioned it before, is Hey Jude. Mm. Um, the, the bit that at the end, I think Hey Jude, I, I, I don't want to be quoted on this. I think it's, a, no one thinks this, but it's around about seven <laughs> minutes long or something. You always think it's kind of like one of the Beatles pop songs. Mm. And the, nah, nah, I oh, better not do it. The bit that goes na 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 at the end, yes, yeah, that goes on for like four minutes, round and round and round and round. Um, we'd all be advised. Seven minutes and eleven seconds. I had to Google it. It's, it's you had seven. to Google it. Seven minutes and eleven. I wasn't far off. Eh? Eleven seconds. Yeah, very yeah. close. Uh, yeah, just you know, but you know, there is a feeling now that um, well, that was back then that people back in the sixties and the seventies were more open to listening. It's not really true. Radio songs were two and a half minutes, as I said earlier, mm. in the 60s. They they had to be that. Um, your pop songs were very short and sparkly normally, so um, not necessarily true at all. Um, you know, and we get the odd artists now, don't we, that breaks the rules, and, um, and they normally do quite well if they're just commercial enough, but break the rules enough to go, oh, that's refreshingly different. Mm -hmm. Agree. Right. Um, one thing I would say to my 20 year old self, though, um, Ooh, in terms yeah. of that, um, I think we were both alluding to the idea of what people think of you. I think it works both ways because we we tend to think when we give this advice, you know, do what you want to do. Don't worry what other people think of you. I think people probably imagine we're suggesting be weird and crazy and wild, you know, but actually, I mean, it both ways, if the real you just loves really contemporary mainstream music. And that's what yep. you love. And that's what you want to do. Do that. Do it fully. Mm -hmm. You know, don't apologize for it. You know, um, if it's a, a genre of music that a lot of people would turn their nose up, if you love it, love it. Love it fully. Don't ever apologize for the music you're making. Just make it. And, I mean, we'll all snigger behind your back, of course, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, that was, I shouldn't have said that. I totally undermine myself. Oh, uh, as a fan of adult contemporary music these days, as a as a forty something, um, then yeah, I, I, I do. I, I feel the sniggering and I feel the laughing because Air Supply were the one of the greatest bands of all time, and anyone that says <laughs> anything other than that uh, is is uh, is lying, and I don't like you anymore. But yeah, no, you you are a hundred percent right, and uh, it is. It, it's so it's it's embrace your embrace whatever you are. And exactly, exactly that. You think you need to be way out there and wacky. You need to be the next, like, weird Mr. Bungle. Or, hey, you may want to just be the next, just really generic. You may love generic pop rock, and that's fine. If Michael Bolton is your jam, Michael Bolton is your jam. That's all there is to it. Exactly. Yeah, purely, purely that. So there's going to be all kinds of, you know, there's always someone who's going to turn their nose up at you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I did mention earlier was that um, I... I've spent many years um, busking. I really enjoy busking as an art form. I've done it all over the place. Um, and if you, and it doesn't suit all genres of music, but if you play a kind of a genre of music which suits busking, I definitely recommend give it a go. Very, very, um, oh, sorry. Someone's saying Pete's too loud or Mike is too I've, soft. I've just turned myself I'll, down a bit. I'll get sorry. you. Um, I would definitely say it's something that's really worth doing in terms of understanding what I understood earlier on is if I was playing a, uh, I used to really like Tracy Chapman. So, so I was playing mm. a Tracy Chapman song yep. and there's a guy walks past and, you know, he's into death metal. It doesn't matter how well I perform or how, how well I sing. He's not going to, I'm not going to stop him in his tracks and, you know, he's not going to throw me money or give me praise or that. And there's, you know, there's some people you just will never win over. You mustn't try to do that. You mustn't try and win over everyone, right? You've just got to 
do what you do and the people that do like what you do will be absolutely delighted to discover you and and find you you know that's one of the um, great things um, about doing what you you do because when you find those like souls they will be so enthusiastic about it also um yeah um exactly this this little comment here i think this is down to you um, i love air spy and judas priest yes there you go that is good and apologies if I was uh, blasting anyone's eardrums. We we did try to balance our audio early no, on. I think um, some, somebody's been saying that we're both a little bit quiet, actually. So. Um... Oh, okay. Well, now I'm now I'm even quieter because I've turned myself down. I'm self-conscious now, so that's okay. My 20-year-old self is like hiding back in his introverted bubble now because um, I don't want to be too loud. <laughs> um, Ten Zapper, my first band was an air supply cover band in 1985. I quit over creative differences and started a Rush Hendrix band. <laughs> Definitely going from air supply to Rush Hendrix. Where you, I, I can suspect where the where the creative differences were coming from there. I don't mind a bit of air supply. Don't mm-hmm. mind a it bit of. Alone. Don't mind a bit of Rush, but I'm going to really upset people Uh-oh. now and say. I haven't over the years been a big fan of Jimi Hendrix. I get why people are, you know, being incredibly creative as a guitarist, all that stuff. Mm. Absolutely. I don't disagree that he's legendary, that he deserves the accolades, but I don't tend to put on Jimi Hendrix tracks and listen to them. But, you know, we all have our different tastes. Rush, on the other hand, really amazing, like really could get very stimulated by things I hear. Yeah, you, you, you've said controversially in the past on our shows that you yeah. are not a fan of shredding when it comes to the guitar. So not, you prefer really, a good no, no. lead part, you prefer a good rhythm part, you're not into the whole shredding, let's just like rip a ridiculous solo. Is that is that true? Is that, yeah, yeah that? absolutely. Yeah, I, I get, I get. I mean, I can't do it for a start, so there's a little <laughs> bit of jealousy involved. <laughs> but uh, apart from the jealousy... Which mm-hmm. really works where it all stems. But apart from the jersey, <laughs> when I listen to it, it's just like I get a blank feeling. Like, mm. and and you know, back in those days in the band, we, we did have a guitarist who's very talented, a lead guitarist who was an amazing shredder, um, very much from the, um, who were those guys back in those days? I can't, the name escapes me now. Oh my. My God, that's embarrassing. But, you know, Joe Satriani, um, that Mm. kind of stuff back then, he was very much into that, really good stuff. He could do it, and he did it over to my songs. (laughs) You can sense the bitterness already. He'd soloed like that in my songs, and we had another stage where we had another guy, and he just had a nice little uh, Fender Telecaster, and he would just play Mm. melodic lines, and I used to love. I didn't want his guitar solos to stop. You know, I just used to enjoy. That's just a personal taste thing, mm. though. Um, yep. Anybody, I know there's a few people watch my channel who love shredding. Guys, sorry, I don't upset you, <laughs> but uh, we all have our own thing. Music's thankfully like that. Absolutely, that have our own thing. There's room for all um, of us. And yeah, and again, like like as you've been saying, I think that it's 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 a good sort of circle thing of what we're talking about. That you know, what well, if that's what you like and that's what you're doing. Then go and do be, be the best shredder that you can possibly be, and uh, Mike and I will Absolutely. applaud you from the sidelines. Uh, but yeah, like that. Uh, and uh, sorry, sorry to take over and say this again, but no. not everyone is going to like everything you do all the time. And I think you've probably realised that in the in the time that you've been making videos, you've made tens, hundreds of videos on your channel. Uh, some people will say that's the best video I ever saw, and some people will say you're a fool and everything you say is foolish. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice I, I had a video um, the other day and it just made me laugh so much because um, I was reading a comment, you know, usually folks, when, when you send comments on videos, I'm usually, you know, on the toilet or something. I don't know. I'm just, it's, it's, this is a good time to read the comments. But, um, and I'm sitting there wherever I was and I read this comment and this person just says, um, you talk too much, you, you don't get to the point, you know, you, you, you go into way too much detail in your videos, just, you know, let the music speak for itself. I can't remember the exact words. And I thought, okay, you know, da, da, da. delete. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> ban. No, I didn't ban them. I just went, okay, you know, that might happen. And then uh, about 10 minutes later, again, looked at the phone. There was a, mess- a 
a comment from somebody else on exactly the same video saying, I love the fact that you go into so much detail and you cover that you don't skirt mm -hmm. over things. Yeah, it's exactly the same, you know. Some people are going to love. I, I went to see Queen recently, yeah? Yeah. Mm. And uh, there's this little bit that Brian May does in the middle of the show where he goes off on this very dreamy kind of guitar thing. I can see the face you're making, Pete. <laughs> I was a queen and I saw that anyway. Right, and he did that. He did that thing. And um, and I, I didn't uh, enjoy it. <laughs> but it's, it's you're like, bloody hell. You know, I'm seeing this show with these amazing songs. Give the guy a break. If he wants to sit there and play with his guitar for five minutes. Let him play with his guitar and have fun. And I heard some people complaining about it, and, and I thought, oh, you know what? Stop bloody whinging! Like you've just seen one of the greatest guitarists of all time. Stop it! <laughs> yeah, you were uh, one of those uh, whinges. I can see. That was, that I was one of those whinges, one hundred percent. No, no, no. I I didn't whinge, but I just sat there going, "This could have been two minutes, and it was about twelve in the end." Uh, but that's okay. He stood on a planet and he played a guitar for a while, and <laughs> I just checked my phone and answered some comments. So it was fine. It was all good, oh, but um, yeah, but again, I spoke to people the next day, and you're 100 percent right that they said that was the best thing that they had ever seen, and they thought that concert yeah. was electrifying, and I thought it was okay. So, and it was funny because I watched uh, about a week afterwards. I watched a whole um, live show of Queen, and I think it was in like Brazil or something in the late 70s, and this was like one of these things, like it's an hour and a half long or whatever. <laughs> he did exactly the same thing. <laughs> It was exactly the same. Planet he wasn't and all. sitting on the planet. Levitating the piece planet. of music was the same, man. So he'd been doing it for a while. He's determined to keep it in there, right? <laughs> Uh, as Greg M says here, Adam Lambert does a fair job. Queen do a fair job. The fact that they're still performing and the fact that I can say that I've seen Queen, like they started in the 60s, like late 60s, early 70s. And here in 2020, we can still see at least two of the original Queen members playing is a good thing. But I think back, yeah. back to your original point, the fact that they're doing their thing and some people will love it and some people will hate it is 100% fine. And my, my only response to comments, and I don't know if you're the same with this, is whenever I get negativity, A, if it's really personal and really horrible, I'll just go, see ya, delete, <laughs> because no one needs to see that. Like, negativity is not part of my mojo. But if they're just giving me some general advice or criticism, my general response is, okay, that's cool. Like, if I do something, I'm not going to ever do something that 100% of people are going to watch and love. And it's the same with your music. You're not going to create music that 100% of people love because no one loves all music and no music genre is loved by all people. So if you're mm. appealing to everyone, you're probably doing something way too generic or you're just in this illusion land where it's not ever going to work. So if at least 20% of people don't dislike your music, you're probably not being true to yourself and creating your right yeah, music. Absolutely. Is my absolutely. <laughs> Picking up on some of the comments here, Drummer Boy was saying, oh, no, sorry, I've gone to the wrong one. I'll get back to Happy Ron there. Uh, Drummer Boy was saying, advice to 20 or so, ignore the voice in your head and keep killing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, Happy Ron was saying, Shreddy, I love it. Shreddy, I love it if it's a part of the song, but not for minutes at a time. Uh, <laughs> I could see he would have a place. Like some some music in my mind as well, Ron, is uh, like emotional, and mm. some of it's intellectual. You know, in my opinion, God, I'm offending people tonight. Jazz is a little bit more intellectual. <laughs> Blues is a bit more solely, and jazz. Is a little, not saying that some jazz music hasn't moved me, but. It's there to stimulate, like, and that's okay. It's okay to listen to music for that reason. To go, oh wow, mm. that just totally surprised me and threw me. Yep. But it's not like going to make you cry necessarily. But it, it's just going to you're going to enjoy really it. Because... <laughs> 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 so I think it's a bit. <laughs> oh my god, I've managed, managed to offend all kinds of genres of music here. Um, <laughs> more for the better. Uh, I guess it's plastic no. glue. Um, keep yeah. it up, Mike. I've learned quite a lot. Cheers. I appreciate that. Um, as Greg said, yeah. Um, I've learned know, a lot from Mike in his uh, 74 years of creating music tutorials. I've learned a lot from Mike too. <laughs> yeah. So, 1939. I'll give you a test on that later. I'm going to um, say, it's, it's climaxing to the fact we get to review your age. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued myself. Uh, Ten Zappa. Um, and I just want to ask Ten Zappa, is Zappa your real name or is it a... Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. What's the word? It doesn't homage. relate to Frank Zappa in an homage to Frank Zappa. Because I have to say in that case, there is a very a kind of very technical style of music, Frank Zappa, that I really did enjoy. You know, like mm. he was very he was very much a musical genius, Frank Zappa. But um it, it also had well had a lot of fun in it. And but it also had some just heart in it as well, which I think is really important. Some people manage to do both. Um, yes, 300,000 in Brazil yeah. for Queen. That was massive. Um, uh, trials and music don't mix well together. Respect all things and learn from them. Yeah, it's something that I've been meaning to say as a tagline at the end of my videos. So I'll test it out on you guys. Tell me what you think. Because, you know, I always do the, t the thing. Uh, what's the p thing people pick up on? Like um, uh, if you dislike this video, hit the dislike button twice. Um, and I was thinking... Um, of saying this let me just remember what it was just remember snarky comments don't make you a better producer <laughs> yeah, oh, about that. yeah if i watched your video to the end i would really enjoy hearing that but uh, <laughs> I, I think about the 30 seconds like most people so uh I'll, I'll classic probably... man classic classic oh dear i'm just looking <laughs> at myself on the other screen and i'm really really am pixelated you, you are you're like fading away you remember back to the future where his brother while he was playing johnny be good <laughs> and his brother's photo started fading away i'm a little bit worried um, about mike but he's just gonna fade I know. Away. this is this is this is this is 2020 aging <laughs> i'm aging very very quickly you don't get i've got plenty enough wrinkles anyway but you don't get more wrinkles these days you just become pixelated that's what youtube does to you that, we that. can't show people that pixelated you, it's okay because you're matching every. Have you noticed that all of these like professional like video people that are yeah. usually have like a whole team of people behind them suddenly they are looking really terrible because they got no makeup, they got no videographer, they got they, no know. lighting. They just like they're, they're putting their webcam or their phone in portrait mode and they're just like I'm here live in my mansion in Beverly Hills. <laughs> they still look better than me. This is thank you to uh, the internet in Australia. Thank you so much. Right, um, MBN. Previous, all the way. Previous governments who didn't. Uh, fund it. Uh, anyway, uh, not wanting to get political, um, but just want to say hi to a couple more people. I think we're going to start to wind things down now. I hope you've, this has been a bit of an impromptu thing, but thanks to everyone who joined us. It's been fantastic to see you all here. Um, a quick hi to Fiddling With My Whistle. Thanks. Nice to see you, Fiddling. Haven't seen you around for a while. Best name Always on the nice internet. nice to see you. Best name on the internet. Um, yeah, and just to, uh, just to confirm that this is an homage to Frank Zappa, so oh yeah, rest in peace, Frank. I, if you're a musician, surely you like Frank Zappa because what's not to like? Anyway, mm -hmm. um, there you go. Uh, what are we going to say? Don't leave us, Mike. We need. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fading. I'm fading. I'm going, I'm going. disappearing. Uh, you, you did miss it all again. Uh, and uh, here we go. Uh, thank you both. Great job. John, I think you're, you, yes, John, John over here. <laughs> Pete, I, I Pete John. Um, John. It's Pete okay. Jones. No, 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 totally. I, seriously, about half of my comments are like, thanks, John, that was a great video. And I'm like, awesome. <laughs> um, that's fine. Just keep watching it. That's fine. <laughs> when you have two first names as your first name and surname, I'm 100% used to it. So I don't even, Absolutely. I don't even mention it, it anymore. Totally. I just think of you as that. Bald git. <laughs> that bald git what's also in Australia and makes them videos. That's fine. No, it's all it's all good. Like uh, we we, yeah. we do need to we do need to do some more videos together. We did we, we did do. a show oh. last year. We've been meaning to start it again. And what are we? April. Uh, what bloody I excuse know. do we have? I, I know. Predict. I I I did say to you that I had to put a hold on the show while I made my um series about how mm. to record a song from beginning to end and yes. release it. And by the way. If, you guys haven't discovered that series, then do look that up on my channel. Do indeed. And also, uh, before we go, so big thanks to you, Pete, for jumping in last minute like this. Entirely enjoyed being with you. Um, and we have another show planned together, as it turns mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, Australia. It might be a different day on some other part of the world. Could be Tuesday. Night. Yeah. Could be Tuesday. Not sure. Um, but during that show, I'll be announcing that Pete's going to help me uh, pick the winner for the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 giveaway. Um, Pete, you've, you, just a quick one. No, we'll leave that to the show on Wednesday. I was going to ask you a question <laughs> about that, but but we're going to leave that to the show on Thursday. Ooh, um, mysterious. And, you better tune in. 
he's been he's been a good addition to this live show for people who've watched me struggle by myself on live shows before. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um but yeah no absolute pleasure man to to have you congratulations by the way on your channel because i know you are a nat's whisker away from reaching forty thousand subscribers on your channel and when i first got to know you which was about one year and three months ago you Ooh. had six thousand subscribers at that time so you really chugged along there and i have to say um if anybody hasn't guessed by now, it's a lot of hard work to achieve that. Pete has worked extremely, extremely hard at that. And I know that he does like answer his comments and his emails as well. I can't get my head around that, but I know you do it. Um, but uh, I, all I do is send apology emails to people saying, sorry, I didn't respond to your email. <laughs> you, you need to start automating that, Mike, and then uh, then, yeah, you, then you'll be good. Just, just put the out of office on and you'll be okay. But oh, no, no, thank you. Somebody did say... <laughs> Somebody did say nobody really guessed at what songs were number one when I was born. Oh, I'm yeah. tell you. So in the Billboard charts in the year that I was born was a song called Honey by Bobby Goldsboro. Ooh. Now, I looked this up on Wikipedia earlier and I thought, I don't think I know this song because at first I thought it was a different song. It wasn't. And it's a tragic song about a woman dying. <laughs> It is. It's about this guy cool. singing about how he met this woman. It was at number one in the Billboard charts for four weeks. Uh, during the time that I was born. So that was the world that I was born into. Four-minute songs. It's about four minutes, this song. And it was talking about his missus dying and how he missed her. Could be a true story, which I've just trampled all over, by the way. Um, didn't sound like a true story. But, yeah, that was the number. And even worse, because I always thought that, that British music was a little bit better than American music. There I go, offending another whole continent now. Um, but, but uh, no, it's not the case. The year that I was born, and I'm sorry, I don't want to criticise people who love this music, but number one in the UK charts in the week that I was born was the song called Congratulations by Cliff Richard. Oh, and there's two that's reasons I won't sing that song now. Sorry, sorry, yep. <laughs> there's two reasons I won't sing that song now. First of all, because... I'll get demonetized by YouTube. And second of all, even if I wasn't going to get demonetized, I still wouldn't sing that song because it's rubbish. It's an absolute <laughs> shocker. It is, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we won't so, sing it because I don't want to get your video demonetized. But that's that's no. a, that's a shame. And did you know that the uh, the song, uh, well, the album "Honey" by Bobby Goldsboro? Because apparently there's a whole album that was right, based okay. around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I won't say the year it was this. released. People can look that up. But it actually won the Country Music Association Award for Song of the Year. That year, so well, a bit of a there country song. There you go. I know, yeah. I know, I know. I had to listen to it earlier, and it was just before the show started. I was in blubbing in tears. I was, but not <laughs> how sad that it was his wife died, but how terrible the song was. Really, that was the world that I was born into. It's like the universe was saying, "Come here and please make some good music." And I said, "Okay, I'll have okay. a go." Got to be better than this. <laughs> So, yes, yes, as Ray has said, 1968 was uh, the year I was born, Ray. I've given all the clues there. 12th of April, 1968. I'll leave you with what my mother said about this because apparently I was born on Good Friday. And uh, she said, uh, you were born on Good Friday and you've been bad ever since. So that's my mother. That's my mother. That's what she says about <laughs> I, I, I have not, I have nothing to, to raise that your mum has just nailed it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to step back and mic drop. Done. Joe, Joe's, Joe's obviously give, either knows it or has given it a quick list. I'm not sure which one you, you're referring to, Joe. I must admit it is pretty dreadful. I'm, I'm sure either of them. Hopefully, so. Your life or the song, one of the two. It's fine. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, looking at this, um, yeah, look at look at Ten Zappa. He's got a good song, Get Back by the Beatles. If I'd been born two or three months later, I think it would have mm. been Lady Madonna by the Beatles, right? I mean, I could have I could have lived with that. I could have gone, hey, this planet doesn't need me. Some great music being written. But obviously, well, I didn't really help, to be honest. If you listen to some of my <laughs> songs, they were pretty bad, but... <laughs> You, you've inspired me, mate, because now I need to find out what was uh, the 1st of March in uh, 79, which I'm pretty sure it was probably something terrible by, like, the Bay City Rollers or ABBA or oh, something. Oh, yeah, like ABBA. Or, uh... And don't say ABBA are terrible because no, no, ABBA are a really ABBA. good band. Yeah, they were, they were I solid. like ABBA. Some they were my favourite Swedish band in the 70s. Quietly. <laughs> 
I'm serious <laughs> about this. There's some bloody good songwriting in their catalogue. I'm telling you. We'll have to explore the back catalogue of ABBA. Maybe, maybe that's the, those videos. The, those videos. I don't know if you remember the the, the ABBA videos, but uh, they all yeah, hang on. This, yeah. right? <laughs> you don't want the guys no, looking you, a little bit like me. No, maybe a little bit more yeah, hair. You, have, you have to face forward. Let's, to pretend, let's pretend we're the girls, right? You have to face forward. Right? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know we'd have to pretend to be girls on this show. Okay, go on. All right, you have got to face forward, and then you, I'm, you singing your bit, right? We'll, we won't call it. Let's say the song. Uh, let's say uh, daddy, daddy. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Right, you, yeah, and then you swap, and I go forward, and you go side, and I oh, go. Why, like why did I ever hate you so? <laughs> and then we. <laughs> that was the most awkward, terrible two middle-aged men trying to do an Abra impersonation without breaching copyright that I've ever seen. That's yeah, quite absolutely, and you do look a little bit like um, the like Bjorn or something, like one of the guys. Yeah, I've got yeah the very good. Years. Look, Beyond. honestly, really good piano player. And I think, you know, harmony, you can learn a lot from about harmony if you listen to ABBA a little bit. You could listen to oh, other people too. I'm going to have to explore some ABBA. I'm doing a decade-by-decade decade breakdown on my channel over the next sort of six weeks. So the 60s are coming up this week. So I'm going to be tapping into I'm going to have to get some uh, Bobby – Is it was it Bobby Goldsborough? Uh, I'll probably be uh, learning more <laughs> about Bobby Goldsborough. And then the that following week, it. it'll be all about but Make sure ABBA. there's no razor blades around when you're listening to it. So uh, it sounds a bit depressing. Well, country music is like, isn't it? I flipped my pickup truck and then my dog left me and then my wife <laughs> left me from my cousin's oh, brother. Now you're offending a whole genre of music. Oh, now, are you, Pete Jones? Um, well, you've already you're offended me. the entire. You, I think you said something bad about the US before, anyway. So, hello look, to my. We've US. got a real youngin in here. Look at this one. Look, somebody here. We should have gone five minutes ago, but anyway. Ooh. Miss you much, Janet Jackson. Oh, that's. See, well, that I kind of rate Janet one. Jackson. I rate oh, Janet Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down of all the Jacksons between Tito, Michael, and Janet. Uh, Janet's uh, all getting my vote just quietly. Was there a Tito? I think there was a Tito Jackson. I don't know. I totally missed you know, in my head. One of the Jackson Five. I sounds don't know. like sounds like a, a dog from a movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you, oh, that you, was you Toto, know. was it? Toto. Toto was a band that that wrote Africa. <laughs> Who was the dog in the Wizard of Oz? Was it Tito? Also Toto. Or Toto. I don't think you sang Africa, though. Not in that song, anyway. You, you, you know when you, you know you've gone probably about, well, I don't know, seven and a half minutes past, uh, as long as you should have gone? And yeah, this is not talking. even the show anymore. This is the post-show. Remember we used to do a post-show where you talk rubbish after the actual show had finished? We've, <laughs> we've re reinvigorated the spirit of the uh, of creative. What did we even call that, Creative Studio Live? Yes. There you go. This is, this is anyway, I think we're going to let these people look, look um, let's finish off here. Uh, folks, happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know for some of you it will be early in the day on Easter. We've already had Easter, and what we can tell you is it was an awesome day. So we've done it, and yep. you can look forward to a great day ahead of you. Thanks so much to everyone who's joined in the comments. Thanks so much to Pete Johns for joining me um, on the show. Um, it, I don't know if this show was useful to anyone, but you know it, it might, might provide a little bit of entertainment insight into how... Uh, stupid we are but um coming up just quickly oh, there's always more just coming up quickly this week i've got some tips for lockdown tips for things that you could learn during lockdown coming up i've got a tutorial about audio snap in cakewalk coming up and i've also got some studio one tutorials that i'm planning don't worry cakewalk users i'm not moving away from cakewalk i'm just also doing some uh things for studio one users whether well, some studio one uh, users on my channel and it's another DAWS. Quickly, Pete, have you got any plans for this week on your channel? What would you be talking about? I, I do. So I uh, come out tomorrow in about six hours time. So I better get some sleep. We've got GarageBand Weekly, my weekly live show. And then I'm doing an AMA and ask me anything on my channel. So uh, if anyone is interested in learning more about me, my music, I'm doing a bit of a uh, inspired by Mike thing. And uh, I have to say, because it's YouTube, if you got some value out of this one, and if you did enjoy Mike's uh, life story and rantings, please hit the <laughs> like button. And subscribe to his channel because you're going to do yourself a massive favor by doing those two things just quietly. Thank you for mentioning that, Pete, because I'd forgotten totally about that. Yeah, and if you didn't like this, uh, do make sure you hit the dislike button twice. twice. Um, so that's it from us, folks. Thanks very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
remember uh, to be fruitful and creative during the lockdown period, which however long that's going to last for. We don't know how long, but it's a great time to take advantage of the fact that you're at home with your gear and you can learn much more about this craft that we're both trying to uh, help you uh, uh, learn about as well. So thank you very much, and we'll see you on Wednesday when me and Pete will be back with another live show. Good Ciao. Night.